Good afternoon. Welcome to the Parish of All Saints South Granville. It's been a busy week. Uh, there have been all kinds of meetings, congregational meetings, wardens meetings, diocesan meetings, as we have considered together the newly released uh, COVID guidelines from our diocese. Each of the congregations has had extensive deliberation. They've talked to one another and essentially have decided for the moment to hold the course. Uh, the restrictions will remain in place pretty much as they have been. But having chosen the option that vaccination is not required to come to worship, although, of course, it is required for those who are participating in worship. We'll be sending out a lot more details over the next days about the schedule for our Christmas services, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So watch for that. It will be shortly forthcoming. A lot of other announcements this week. Uh, the Widows Group is meeting in Prescott at the new cafe. Uh, men's luncheon and women's luncheon meeting at the Homestead Deli just outside of Brockville. All are welcome to participate in any of these events. And we hope we'll see you next week. Uh, St. Paul's are coming to St. John's for lesson, Advent lessons and carols. This is not Christmas lessons and carols, but we sing hymns that get sung quite rarely in our church calendar. So we hope you'll enjoy it. And the same service will be then held at St. James at 11 o'clock. This Sunday is the day on which we honor or commemorate the reign of Christ, focus on it in a particular way. I am using forms of prayer to be used in families, the morning section. If you're using your Book of Common Prayer, you will find these words on page 728. O oh God, my God, early will I seek thee. In the morning I will direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We give thee hearty thanks, O Heavenly Father, for the rest of the past night, and for the gift of a new day. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of thy service, that at eventide we may again give thanks unto thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect prayer for this, the reign of Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King, grant that the peoples of the earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his loving and gentle rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm for today, Psalm 93, the majesty of God's rule. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of many waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. And the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? 
Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so are you a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The reign of Christ. Christ the King. It's a Sunday of strong songs and surging liturgical confidence. But what are we talking about? What are we asked to make our focus on this, the last Sunday before Advent, the last Sunday of our church year? What are you talking about? Certainly that's what Pilate wanted to know. Are you a king? I've always been a little bit puzzled by St. John's comparatively sympathetic portrayal of this Roman governor, because according to the non-biblical sources that we have from the period, Pilate had a wretched reputation in the ancient world. All Saints is a parish which has uh, done a lot of drama, much of it under your former rector. I've seen some photos of the dramas that you've produced and would love to see one. Kirk Douglas, who was a practicing Jew, uh, protested that Hollywood had turned Pilate into Hamlet. And some would argue that St. John has done the same because it's Pilate that gets to ask the big questions, deliver some of the classic lines. What is truth? Behold the man. Here is your king. John's gospel is often described as a theological gospel. Why? Because in story after story about Jesus and his ministry, there's a returning to the question, exactly who is Jesus anyway? And what is his relationship to God the Father? And what is the underlying, eternal meaning of his actions, of his miracles, of the imagery? In John 18 and 19, Pilate is at center stage because the author of the gospel sees in Pilate's character something universal identifies tendencies of the human heart that don't change. Pilate is you. Pilate is me. Asking some of the same questions and certainly struggling to understand this kingship. If Pilate asked, if you're a king, why are you here before me? Fragile, vulnerable. People continue to ask if Jesus is king. If he's sovereign over creation, why is he not here? Why is he not exercising control, preventing disasters like the one we witnessed this past week, continue to witness on our West Coast? Why doesn't he send rain on those forest fires? Why doesn't he overturn the rule of brutal tyrants? Maintaining order in Palestine can have been a particularly desirable assignment in any man's professional career. You have to wonder if Pilate and his wife would sit out on their balcony in the cool of the evening and watch the sun go down over the desert and dream of better days in earlier, more peaceful postings by the Mediterranean. Pilate was stuck in a city with a small headquarters staff in a cranky hotbed of political revolutionaries and religious fanatics. Was he sick of and sickened by the seemingly endless controversies about worship, controversies and rebellions in the streets? Luke 13 indicates that Pilate had faced earlier problems with the Galileans, He'd appropriated temple money, never a good idea, to build city aqueducts. He'd gone so far as to send troops into the temple and massacre worshippers at prayer, rather like the horrific slaughter 
of Christian scene sanctuary that we've seen or we saw historically in churches in Rwanda, places like Baghdad. So early in the morning, and wouldn't you know it, during Passover, one of the most volatile religious festivals of the year, a feast which always stirred up memories of Jewish liberation from the oppression of Egypt, Pilate finds himself handling a capital case. It's impossible for us to know if he had prior knowledge of Jesus. What he does know is that the religious leaders want Jesus dead. But to convict of a capital crime is outside of their jurisdiction. If they weren't after the death sentence, they'd have dealt with it themselves. Knows they can't get what they want. They can't make it happen. And because the religious leaders won't ritually contaminate themselves by entering the precincts, Pilate finds himself able to interrogate Jesus alone. Verse 33, are you the king of the Jews? Verse 35, what have you done? 37, the question repeated, are you a king? Three curt questions to satisfy Roman judicial process. In other words, have you committed treason? And what each of the gospel accounts of this trial make clear is that just as surely as Pilate knew what outcome the religious authorities sought, he also knew that the man on trial in front of him did not deserve to die. Before Pilate stood the kind of man with light in his eyes, the accused possessed a natural authority, a clearness, a strong integrity, a self-containment. But kingship? Ludicrous. This feast of Christ the King is a relatively recent one. It was only inaugurated in 1925 by Pope Pius XI as a reaction to the rise of secularism and disillusionment in the decade after the Great War. Established recognizing that Christians, that followers of Jesus need reminders of the scope, of the sweep of what we believe about Jesus. We'll soon be cranking up versions of Handel's Messiah in our homes, at least in our home. We'll be listening to words like wonderful, counselor, almighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. But very few of us have visions like the one of Daniel, the one of St. John in the Revelation, readings that you would have had uh, sent attached to you this week. Few of us have visions of Jesus in his blazing, radiant majesty. And we live in a world where we see what we see is a massive disconnect often between goodness and power. And so every church year ends with the strong declaration that this will not always be the case. Ends with the church's brave assertion that love, love made visible in Jesus, is the only undefeatable, triumphant power. I ask again this today, this morning, how do we see this reign? How do followers of Jesus make their citizenship under Christ's rule visible? I'm going to leave you this morning with a personal story. It's one I've told before because I learned a very important and cherished lesson from a friend and colleague with this story. My friend and I worked together in an inner city congregation in Ottawa when Mel was at the Grace Hospital. And I know it was about this time of year because the night was really cold and damp and dark. Every Friday night, we ran a coffee house. Uh, It was live music. We'd provide coffee. We kept our health clinic open until about midnight. And people would line up along Gladstone Avenue to get in. And that night in the line was a couple that I was forever visiting at home. And no matter how many times I would visit, it seemed no matter how many times I took over food or supplies, 
There was never a speck of food in the house for the children. Never any toys. There always seemed to be enough for dad's toys and for his social life. But that night, this couple had their four sweet little girls with them in that line. There were no other children. This was not a place for children. This was a line of the very broken of the city, people struggling with addiction, street involved, some of the sex trade workers who had come to trust us and know us. But one little munchkin, this little girl was jumping up and down and her name, we'll call her Claire, uh, called out to me and she said, Barb, I'm having my birthday party. And I absently responded, well, that's fantastic, Claire. Where, when, here, tonight, she said. And my blood began a slow boil. I thought, this poor little kid, there's no other children. We don't have any party provisions. We don't have any cake. We don't have any food. How many times I was thinking, had we got involved with this family? How many times had we tried to help for nothing? What was the matter with these people? The emotions were the emotions surging through me. And I pushed through the crowd into my office in the clinic and I was furious. I found my friend, my colleague, and I blurted out the story. And she said to me, well, in bar, we make a party. And so we did. We located some of the toys that were being gathered for the Christmas appeal. We found some candles, flew a few balloons. There was secondhand cake. We were always getting donated cakes from some of the downtown bakeries. And this little girl sat in the middle of all that confusion and she glowed. My colleague had made sure that night that Claire was kingdom cared for in the joy of Jesus. St. John started his theological gospel by saying, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out. And just as Jesus inaugurated his rule in his neighborhood, that is exactly what is asked of us. We're asked to be little glimmers of his glory. Citizens of a kingdom not from this world, it has a divine, not a human origin, but citizens of a kingdom for this world. If you like, we're called to be the advance guard for a world under Christ the King. And living under the gentle rule, the colic spoke of this day. May God help this to be the case through and in us. Amen. Our prayers continue. O Lord God, who has bidden light to shine out of darkness, and who has again wakened us to praise thee for thy goodness and to ask for thy grace, accept now the offering of our worship and thanksgiving, and grant unto us all such requests as may be acceptable to thy holy will. Make us to live as children of the light and heirs of thy everlasting kingdom. Remember, O Lord, according to the multitude of thy mercies, thy whole church, all who join with us in prayer, and all our brethren, particularly those of our parish, wherever they may be, who stand in need of thine aid. Pour down upon us all the riches of thy grace, so that redeemed in soul and body and steadfast in faith, we may ever praise thy wonderful and holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, most high and holy, three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we offer to thee this day ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, to whom be all praise and glory. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen and amen. And have a great week.